Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris Newbie Tutorial Series for version 2.72 of the game. I am your host, Colors Fade. It's episode 27. It's the year 2461 and the crisis has just hinted that it is about to show up. Subspace Echoes. Several of our tracking stations have picked up peculiar subspace echoes coming from somewhere in the intergalactic space. The echoes are faint but getting stronger and they seem to be approaching our galaxy. Okay, a storm is on the horizon. Begins the coming storm event chain. The Folks, situation log updated. this is known as the Prothoran Scourge. Um, there are several different kinds of crisis that you can get at the end of the game, and they're all fairly specialized. It's random which one you get. I encourage you, as a new player, to just go look up the word crisis under the Stellaris wiki and check it out when you get your first notification that is that a crisis is coming so that you can properly counter that crisis because if you don't set up sure if you don't start setting up your ships to counter it as soon as that first notification shows up you can get your butt kicked even if you have big fleets so that's the first thing that we're going to do i am going to take the sixth Starfleet over here that doesn't have a leader yet. And I'm going to send it over here to deal with the Enigmatic Fortress. I'm going to tell these guys to go back home. So the sixth fleet that I'm actually going to rename this fleet to uh, Fortress Fleet. Because they're kind of smaller and I don't you don't need a lot of power fire for the for Fortress, I don't think. If I remember correctly, I'm going to get them a leader. And they can do leader lifespan and ship fire weight, weapon range. Sure. Actually, I'm just going to recruit this guy. It's not quite as cool. I'm going to change this to the 6th fleet. And I'm going to give them a proper leader. And I'm going to say, let's see. He has ship fire rate and leader lifespan or ship hull points. We definitely... Okay, so here's the thing. In daily hull region and daily armor region. These are going to be good leaders for us against the Prothoran Scourge. So... The Prothoran Scourge attack with energy weapons and all kinds of uh, missiles and strike craft. So you need point defense to counter them. And you need lots of armor and hull protection. Their stuff basically ignores shields. So all the time that we've spent in making our shields better, I told you episodes ago, we were probably going to get smoked by that. And of course, that's what happens. So we need lots of point defense, lots of armor, lots of plating. On the offensive side, they are very protected by armor and hull. And uh, you want to use weapons that strike at their armor and hull. So that's the Prothoran skirt. So we're going to go in here and we're going to design some ships. And this is what I like to do. So here's our Corvette. And they have... Pl crystal plating is great. This has 110 points and this has 145 though. So we want to go with the armor instead. Now on offense, what we want is these things, the plasma cannons. That's going to be our best weapon against them on this particular ship or anything like phase disruptor that, that goes straight through and penetrates straight to the hull. Um, so I'm going to rename these and this is going to be... Um, I just call them, well, here's what I usually do. It's a P for the Prothoran Scourge. So I save that, and that becomes my Prothoran. And I'll show you how we're going to use this to, to refit our, our empire. So here, in this case, we want to go all armor. We want the daily hull region. I like this. It's point defense, and it's pokies. So this is picket-P for Prothoran Scourge. We come in here. This is the old picket ship. This is our base ship that was doing all energy weapon damage as a destroyer. I'm probably not going to use these. I'm probably not going to build these. But just in case I change my mind, if we have a few of these still floating around, I'm probably going to change them all over to the picket defense version, in fact, um, which is why I'm just going to delete that design. Because we won't need it. We'll be using... If we have any destroyers in any, in any of our fleets, we're just going to retrofit them to the picket version. The cruisers... Uh, I'm probably all going to be picket defense cruisers. Uh, I think is... And I'm going to use Devastator torpedoes here. I'm going to do all of this. I'm going to change a couple of these. 
I'm going to use some punch and some energy weapons, amoeba flagella. All of our cruisers for the Prethoran Scourge are going to get changed over this. We don't need any shielding. We need that. So we're going to do picket P for the Prethoran Scourge. And I'll show you how all this refitting happens. Now we go to our battleships. And this is properly set up except for the defense part. We don't need any shields. And... I'm going to change one thing about the AI. This is set to stay at 150, and basically if it stays that far back, the only thing it's going to fire is the Tachyon Lance, which does 100 armor and 50 hull damage, which is great. But I want it to actually be closer so that it'll fire off these things, because these do a ton of damage. And they're not going to do it at 130. And in fact, uh, so I want them to be a little closer. So this is, this is I'm just going to rename like this be battleship for Prithorn. This is going to be the only ship we use against Prithorns. We don't need... Uh, well, the Penetrator is also kind of nice, so I'm probably going to use a version of this too. So we'll do this. Change this. All whole region. And uh, tell these things to do it a little closer. I'm going to do be pen... Oh. Like this. Save. And now we're done with that. And we got to go down and we have to fix our Titan. Uh, here, it's the same thing. You want all, this is why you gotta love these guys. It only has the one weapon and the Titan bow part, but we can fix all its defenses. And we can add more daily hull regen to it. It's got defensive for hull regen. It's a, it's saying stay at 150 and shoot its big weapon, and I'm gonna say yes because I don't want to get blown up. So I'm gonna do this, and then uh, I'm gonna change a couple of defensive platforms. Like, these are great, but they have shields. So I'm just going to change them over. And I'm not going to worry about the P variant on them. Because they're just going to get changed over. This same thing. These All these guys. We're just going to do this and we'll upgrade our... Upgrade our defensive platforms as time allows. They're the least important thing to upgrade. It's much more important that we upgrade ships first. And then if we end up having a bunch of leftover stuff, uh, we can do that. And i got to be better with my clicking here. So I'm going to go through and do these because I'm diligent. These And these are, this is why these things are great. These are what you want to change most of your, most of your defense platforms to these. <laughs> the neutron launchers and distill it. Yeah. Defense prot. So get all this stuff done and there are other crises that are exactly the opposite that where, where it's like you want to use as many shields as you can and you want to use kinetic weapons against their shields and blah blah blah, blah. and so that's why I always just recommend just it can it could be uh, really detrimental to you to wait until they show up to inspect their ships and so that's why I so strongly recommend just go look at the wiki. Just go look. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not going to use any of these kinetic ones. Um, the picket ones we're going to use, though. And what is this? What's it say? Oh, no. Never mind. I'm clicking on the wrong thing here. Give me this. Right there. All right. And so that's why I strongly recommend just go to the wiki and look and say what am I up against so that you can start doing this because otherwise you really risk you really risk making things much more difficult for yourself and I, I'm not a fan of making things more difficult for myself so here we go we got those ready to go those are all of our ships now what we'll do is run down here to ships and we'll say first fleet and you go into your ship designer and your fleet manager and you say, um, I want to retrofit. So I want all these corvettes to be of, of the P class. I want all these destroyers to be of the P class for Prey, Thor, and Scrim. All the cruisers, pickets, all these battleships, um, picket, I mean, uh, Prithorans, the kinetic ones get changed over to Prithoran, the penetrators get changed over to the penetrator Prithorans, and then we do that. And we get all that done and we say, okay, upgrade fleet. And then you go to your second fleet, and it's the same sort of thing. So you do this, and it'll retrofit all these guys.
which is wonderful. I love that you can do this because in other games you can't. And it drives me bananas that you can't. Uh, Galactic Civilizations is one of those games that I was always saying, please, just let us do this. And they were like, nope. Nope. Here's a case where we had two cruisers, and so I'm just going to say make them both picket kinds. Penetrators, and all this is doing is, you know, it's swapping them out. Research it's going to go, and it's cool that we, it's not a lot that's being changed. So, hold on. I'm going to go back to research admin capacity, say, uh, food from jobs. Okay, let's go back to fourth fleet was where we stopped that. Retrofit, retrofit. Construction project concluded. Construction. I d this is one of my favorite parts of Stellaris is that it does this and it allows you to do it and retrofit your ships like this and it's like oh I have a specific type of enemy that enemy that it would be very very good if I uh, if I re retrofitted all this stuff it'd be very very useful for me and it, that's exactly what happens is you can come in here and be like yep and it'll do that Got a bunch of different destroyers in here. They've been auto besting, and we're like, no, we got we got way better ideas for this fleet. And I dig some of the music in this game. This is one of my favorite little tracks here. The last couple have been. So then I think I can just do that. Sometimes the game glitches out like that, but that's all right. And so then we can look up here and see the coming storm. And then later on, there'll be some things to track and stuff like that. Uh, a guy over there doing that excavation. How's this going here, Ring World? Oh, 72 days. Hot dog. So, and what, how long is this going to take over here? What's, where is it? It's right there. How long is that taking? 662 days. Okay. Hey, we maxed out on money. All right, I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. We'll take a look at Starbases. I want to wait until... Wait until the gateways are ready to go to get those. So here is this planet. Very nice looking planet now. Let's change some of this. What are we short on? Still rare crystals is the thing we're starting to fall short on again. Research concluded. Research concluded. Let's do army health and army damage because we may need those things I'm gonna buy some stuff here to make that number go down to make that noise stop happening because it makes that squeaky noise and it's like ugh, ugh, hurts my ears research concluded Lots of research happening. Ring world frame complete. Excellent. Energy weapon attack speed. Kinetic weapon damage is less important. Now we want explosive weapon attack speed and armor. Because of the Prithoran Scourge. Ring world frame. Complete. Oh, is this the wrong place? It's right here. <laughs> so ring section A. Oh, we need some of that. We don't have any. <laughs> because, uh just spend it a bunch of it on ships and stuff we'll get we'll get it back uh, in fact we don't need to be selling any of that 
Let's cancel that out. We don't need to sell that. We probably don't need to be selling any of that, but I'm going to leave it where it is right now. We're still buying a bunch of those and we don't need to now, which is great. You can buy a lot less of those. How are we doing on this? We're buying 32 exotic gases and we don't need to buy any. So let's do that. Moats is the next thing we want to get out of the hole on. So this is where, this is Hauer, and Hauer says, we're in the Hauer sector and we don't have anybody. Okay, well, I thought I gave you someone a long time ago. There's an administrative capacity right there. I need that person in an admin place. Hauer, Station B, what is this, commercial zones? Why don't you repair that? Glarp says, I have all of this bureaucracy. Oh, yeah, so you have anti-crime, but I'd really like to get your bureaucratic person in there at some point in time. You don't have any jobs, do you? Okay, we're going to raise a couple of these up. And you guys are all waiting because you have leaders, and you're saying, I, I don't have leadership. I know. Oh, and we're back up there. Okay, we can do this then. I'll just spend some money on that. I think I need I need a lot a lot more than that though. So, oh, we're going through it fast because of fleets or something? What is this? Archaeological site says the work of uncovering the site was technically straightforward despite our having to work in staccato shifts. We removed two featureless strata before encountering a large shell or dome. Other identical domes have been partially uncovered nearby. So far they seem to be arranged in an arc or a circle. Each dome was constructed from a mold and was cured to such a degree that they have withstood geological ages. Ingress to these structures, each of which is the size of a gathering hall, should be possible. Okay. That, rem that always reminds me of uh, that line from Alien Covenant that I absolutely love. God does not draw in straight lines. <laughs> There's so much about that movie I like. Oh my gosh. I'm a, I'm a giant, unabashed Ridley Scott fan. So He's my favorite director. Alright, we're going to send these guys in here. And then we're going to send this ship in there. It's set to evasive. We're going to set it to passive. Move here. This is the enigmatic fortress, which is a a sort of fun thing to do, but it can glitch out. Research concluded. And if it glitches out, then you're just kind of out of luck. So I'm hoping that won't happen to us. But okay, what do we have here? You guys have a lot of you have a lot of unemployed pops here. Are we are we starting to get unemployment everywhere? Cause workers should have places to go because the ring worlds should have the ring worlds should have tons of people. Ring BB. You see they got nineteen there. You guys should be going and taking those jobs. There's ring world spots here. Ring DD. There's 44 jobs there, so so nobody nobody who's a worker should not be unemployed. Alien structure. Okay, hold on. Stop. Pause. 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 Game. Oh, you're just killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, we have detected some kind of utterly massive space installation drifting quietly at the edge of the Baldurk system. Although preliminary scans show it to be very old, the structure has an intense power signature. Several smaller structures can be seen floating near the main installation, and all of them appear to be heavily armed. If we are to learn the true nature of this ancient relic, we likely have to overpower its defenses through force of arms. Okay, so before we do that, I want to go in here and... Give you guys a galactic stock exchange and a ministry of production. And then we can go in here and just say so we need to just, just do it. Oh, hold on. The last couple. Take those off. Take the last three off. 
and add follow our old rule I'm gonna I'm gonna really emphasize that my next playthrough that the last three slots on every single planet should be saved for refineries one of each and I think that keeps you really well balanced in the game okay so go in here and attack these bozos The Enigmatic Fortress. With the defeat of the defenses surrounding the ancient structure, we may find a way to explore its mysteries. Entering and traversing it may be difficult, but whoever built it must have possessed technology we can hardly dream of. Making matters more arduous, the fortress appears to be recovering. Some of the people who helped disarm the fortress have volunteered to attempt to enter and explore it. With backup from the headquarters on Nomad. Following through on our end will no doubt present its own challenges. Give the go-ahead begins the Enigmatic Fortress okay. event chain. Despite the ages of technology separating us and the builders of the fortress, one invention is timeless. A closed door. After having forced the fortress to shut down, we found all entrances sealed. The team dispatched to explore the fortress have found an airlock, which at least appears possible to open from the outside, if it had been in working order. We'll find someone to assist. Situation log updated. So now, this is where our science ship can come in here. And we can say... Research the project in that system. And he'll do that. So the Enigmatic Fortress will recover. And sometimes it can glitch and it can recover extra fast. Which then really sucks. Um, Enigmatic Fortress. With the defeat of the defenses surrounding if we may find a way to exploit. Yes, give the go ahead. So now we're... Situation log updated. So now we get... I think it's already starting to bug out. <laughs> we'll see. Paradox really needs to work on it. It's a, uh, it's a neat little event, but it's got some bugs. And here comes the neighbors. Fleet enhancement supply. They're like, "Hey, you guys aren't doing that all without us, are you?" It's like, "Yeah, we were. We didn't invite you guys. Just give the go ahead. We'll find Situation someone to assist the team. Updated. We're gonna see." Right, what's he doing? Special Local power. Completed. Okay, Fortress, adjusting energy supply. We have stabilized the ship's connection to the power systems at the Fortress. We must decide how much energy to supply in the first surge. Since the technology is unfamiliar, the exact amount is difficult to determine. Two estimates are available. All right. So there's two choices, and the correct choice is give the low power surge or the thing will reset. At first, the amount of energy supplied to the Fortress seemed too small to make a difference. Then, the area surrounding the airlock slowly started to show signs of functioning. With some mechanical tricks and guesswork, the team accessed the controls and managed to open the airlock itself, although not by the cleanest docking procedure, and they are now inside the fortress. Now, he is a level 1 scientist. Um, you can do this with a level 1 scientist, but if you have a level 5, uh, it's better. He's a level 3. I'm going to see if I have... I got a level 4. That's a colony ship. Those are all the scientists I got. What about this guy? He's level three. He's level two. And he's level one. So I don't even have a level five. Okay. Well, in that case, we're just going to go with this. I'm going to roll. Roll him in there and give him a shot. See how it works. All right. The Enigmatic Fortress. With the defeat of... The yes, give the go-ahead. So it keeps firing up and they Situation keep and it keeps kind of restarting and uh okay gateway constructed in the romanox system that's awesome so we're gonna pause and go over there real quick romanox it's right there so now we can say one two three you need three trade hubs on that one and in fact the other ones are, are not going to be far behind so uh one, two, we need two trade hubs there. And then up here, same thing, two trade hubs here. Okay. Come back here. So we'll see about the end of the Yes. Situation log updated. And it keeps doing that, and I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. 
Situation log updated. So I'm gonna move my fleet out of here. I think. I think it's bugged out again, which is really unfortunate because there's really no way. Okay, here we go. Fortress, the tower. The away team find their way blocked by a massive bulkhead. The team report that there is a recessed alcove to their right, housing a pedestal and a contraption wrought with the same black metal as the fortress itself. They believe this device is the key to opening the bulkhead. The leader of the explorers describes it as three upright poles spaced equidistant across the top of the pedestal with three rings, metal and tori, of varying sizes placed around the leftmost pole, and the smallest at the top and the largest at the bottom. So if you rearrange the metal tori on the poles, that gets you a little further. Fortress tower rebuilt. After the course of action was announced, a moment of silence followed. Then the vague scraping noises as the team attempted to carry out their plan. A splashing sound, so loud that at first you think the team has been swatted like small insects, is followed by cheers from the team as they report that a passage is open. The bulkhead appears to have rapidly transformed into an unpleasant smelling liquid reminiscent of purple quicksilver. Combined with the relatively mundane puzzle mechanism, you have the feeling that the team has been victim to an elaborate prank set up a millennia ago. We can laugh about it now. Research concluded. Right, so, the door opened and it farted on them, I guess. I don't know, something like that. It's one of those strange things. What is this? Commercial zones repair. Can you do that? And then give me this one. Oh, look at you. Commercial zones. Science ships sustaining damage. Uh oh. Is it because we're not there? Go back in there. It's because this fortress keeps waking up and shooting at things. I think. It's just it's silly the way they've done this. Yeah. See, and then there are hopefully those allies in there. Okay. The team reports that they have reached what appears to be the geometric center of the fortress, even if the internet, internal geometry leaves some doubt if the concept of a center is even relevant in here. What is indisputably relevant is how the fortress is powered, which makes the team's new discovery all the more interesting. Dark matter is funneled through the fortress and then back to the core like a cardiovascular system. Although the flow has stopped, the team has found signs that it's starting again. We can take all the time we want to study it, but it needs to be stopped now. We'll find a way. Okay, so Bal Durek issues special research project home system research issues. Use use force. So, log so there are choices here. Animatic fortress, and that is uh, okay. Way down. Yeah, there's all this stuff down here. You don't want to use force, so you can supply dark matter, which uh, I think we have. We do. We have a bunch of it. So if we say supply dark matter, scientists present, and if you want to supply, um, let's see, yeah, if you want to supply the dark matter, you just need a level one scientist. If you want to use black hole research, you need, you can see this, it says, uh, has scientists ship present, you need a much higher scientist, you need a level five scientist. So we'll use this research, 30 days, dark matter, and that'll, that'll get us to the end of the enigmatic fortress. So you have two people here. What is this going on here? Yes. With the defeat of the... Def yes, okay. That's this early one. Okay. Uh, see, so it just keeps resetting, which is dumb, but it's still progressing. So Paradox really, 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 really needs to issue a patch for that. It's just frustrating. In the extreme, the enigmatic fortress give the go ahead, yes, because it keeps. Situation log updated. Paradox, fix your damn game, brothers. Special project concluded. Fortress dark matter game, but whoever built the fortress might have been more knowledgeable than we, but not more clever. Supplying our own dark matter to the close, the loop of the power systems in the fortress worked and the core is now effectively cut off from providing power to its systems. Finally, we can take the time to have a closer look at what these knowledgeable people have accomplished. Finally. Great. Ends the Enigmatic Fortress event chain. You get a bunch of research. The Enigmatic co Encoder and Decoder events. And so, um, now you can go home. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, and you can survey the system. I doubt that we can 
grab that system if we wanted to, but why don't you try? You can move over there. So yeah, it's just, it's really, really frustrating. Because it keeps resetting like that. And it's like, man, really? Okay, what do we got here? You guys go over here to Cowry. We're going to need you, I think. Research concluded. And we should be able to be very close here to... Let's buy a little bit more of this. Now we can go down here. We can say... Ring world. Ring section A. Get started. Alright. And on this. Quiet refuge. The chthonic siren. Well, we've yet to identify the source of the pervasive humming. Its dominating presence has begun to wane. Our researchers were since able to focus on breaching the near... <laughs> the near hemispherical structure. The space within is entirely devoid of Research material concluded. contents. Our initial conclusion is that this was designed as a sensory isolation chamber. Furthermore, the inside surface of the dome is illustrated with what appear to be constellation charts, supplemented by mythical figures and some form of scripture. We are already working to interpret these designs. Okay, jobs. Let's go to armor hit points. Now we're just kind of waiting for the big... The big boys to show up. Oh, and how are we doing over here on integration? These folks, the Thick Clack Collective, are one month left. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Chaos once again is about to show up. The Thick Clack. Hmm. Wow, that was some pretty good timing. Got through the Enigmatic Fortress, and then here it comes. The bloop, 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 bloop. Colony gained. And there we go. Wow. Awesome. System survey concluded okay. without incident. Let's get rid of let's downgrade some of these guys that we aren't gonna need. The thick clack. Uh, I'll leave that there actually, but I'm going to switch it to full bastion mode. And they've got a defense super good computer, but they don't have any defenses on it. So we'll put a deep space black side on there. Uh, let's see. And then over here with these neighbors, we'll just downgrade those. So let's take a look at their... I don't have any sectors now. So can one should do it right here in the center. Erexus Habitat. Who else do we have? We have Clack. And this is... Okay. I wish there was a setting you could do at the beginning of the game to say make all the planets and systems names match no matter what other weirdo naming scheme was going on. Um, so this is Clack. This is the home world, and it's purging people. And that's what I thought it would do. Um, it says, yeah, there's 133 pops on here. It doesn't say anybody's declining yet, but I want to wait till the end of the month and see what happens. Because the only people on here are at that Clack, and here's the thing. They're a hive mine, so I don't think that they can be... Yeah, and they're going to start growing our people on here. It doesn't say anything about them declining, but... Complex drones. Yeah, because right here, assimilation. Oh, undergoing assimilation. So they're assimilating. It is going to try and assimilate them. That's interesting. Okay, this is, this is nice, but it's not what we need. So let's take a second here and fix all of this. Um, replace this with food. Make this a agricultural world. Change all of these. What are these? Confluence of thought. Synapsis drone jobs. Plus eight. They turn energy credits into food or minerals. Into unity and an admin capacity. It's their version of an admin job. Um, we're going to replace all this stuff. So we'll say robots. Because we're not a hive mind. So they're going to. They're basically going to go away. If they're not integrated. 
They're basically gonna go away. And what we'll do is, on this planet, we'll just do civilian industries, because that's always a thing we're trying to stay ahead of. And then, mysteriously, they decided to put a research node on this, on a world that had a whole bunch of production instead. Expanded warrens, these add housing, that's basically their version of luxury resources. And we're going to add synthetic crystal plants, and exotic gases, and moats. Alright, so that planet is kind of done, we're going to add migration there and that's clack so there's an Urxus habitat but it's not there's nobody on it so if we go down here this is oublier except the name of the planet is rafzet <laughs> okay we're going to change that oublier <laughs> and we can see they did the same thing here um i think Oh, this planet has so many districts, it's going to be very easy for us to do, like, energy or food. I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for food at the same time. There's a tree of life thing, yeah, that's their deal. Uh, clone vets, commercial zones, robots. We'll replace bureaucracy. We're still doing fine with. We're getting up towards our limit, but we're not having a problem with anything else. So I'm going to do uh, synthetic crystal plant. I'm going to do all the different crystal plants. This is going to make this a refinery planet, basically. Um, food processing, galactic stock exchange, exotic gases, a couple more moats. So that. Oh, and then let's do. Oublier. Decisions here. What is this? Food from jobs. So this definitely needs to be an agricultural one. Would be helpful. So there's that and clack. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff over here that we can uh, land people on, which would be great. Really ish, but I like the Holden system better. Holden. It's a great Blade Runner reference. How is he? Well, he's fine. He can breathe if nobody unplugs him. Um, it's always a great line in that movie. Great line. One of my favorite movies of all time. One of my top two favorite movies for sure. Uh, I would say Ridley Scott owns all my favorite movies. Blade Runner and Alien. It's like, oh my goodness. The man is just incredible. In incredible. All right. So we're just about done here with this. So those planets are done and their habitats are empty and I'm going to leave them that way for right now. What I want to do is take this guy right here and tell him, hey, make a gateway construction site right there because we're going to take all the trade from these systems and we're going to start shipping it over to our home room. The only thing that that did was put us in the hole for food integrating those guys. And I very much like that. So, yeah, and that's maxed out, and that's fine. I like. So, good job, us, that we're back in the hole on exotic gases, but we'll, we'll pull ourselves out. Ready your checkbooks. Oh, so we're back to this, and I just spent some money. So, here we are again. The golden rule. Oh, man, great. Um laws very high when can we do strongest oh. Oh. <laughs> strongest president will be chosen I want to make this happen <laughs> so because we're the strongest by a long ways I want to be in charge of our federation so I don't know I'm I'm going to forfeit I'm not gonna spend any money on that and then when they're done Lorongo Shipping Alliance, Glost Uh I'm going to try to get all the favors I can from these guys. Wow, 
Wow, they want a lot of crystals, don't they? Okay, because I want to do that. Glowst Rahini. I want to be in charge. Okay. Resources. Let's give them gases. Confirm. Who else is in there? The Mirren Alliance of Colonies. The Mirren Alliance of Colonies and who else? I can't scroll down. Is that it? That's the only people in our federation? Research oh no, the game included. was the first one. The Mirren and the Tzikians. Okay. Mirrens and Tzikians. Well. Let's go see about them. Mirrens. The Mirans and the Tzikians, I see. Tzikians, it sounds like Tolmikians. It's one of my favorite films. And the Tzikians. Gentlemen, I want all the favors I can get from you. Research concluded. That's all I can get, okay. All right. Let's see if we can... Oh, Enigmatic Decoder. Can we switch? The president decides. Nope, I want the strongest. Okay. Oh, I can't even get him to call it in. Man, so none of them will say yes. Oh, well, that stinks. The Visari Sovereign Sons. I mean, they, wow, none of these guys... They're like, there's no way we're letting you do this. Sorry, Sovereign Sons. Wow, I can't believe that. I mean, I guess I can, but... That's amazing. Okay, so over here. The Astralo Chamber. Reports from across the United Information Alliance confirm the droning sirens have now dissipated. They ceased almost simultaneously, despite the vast distances between interstellar sites. Since that time, our research team has extrapolated models from the many constellations depicted on the dome's interior, which seems to have been used to make astrological predictions. Data they gathered suggests that this facility is far older than the surrounding strata, by an order of epochs, with one notable exception. Chance discovery of large dace immediately outside the dome suggests that at least one civilization has used this space comparatively recently. The dace was hewn from local stone and is decorated with etchings we believe were used to translate the dome's outdated star charts for a gala gala galaxy blah, 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 arranged much as it is for us now. Okay, well. Huh. Interesting. And we still haven't heard anything about the Praetorian Swarm yet. You golden rule. Strongest. Research concluded. Come on, man. Uh, gateway constructed in the Heishma system. And gateway constructed in the Imdar system. Good. I can't believe it. Okay. Well. I'm not going to get that, am I? <laughs> Enigmatic encoder. Scrambles flight path data... According to some interminable design before feeding it back to fleet command. Uh, Construction project concluded. I guess what we should have done is we should have tried to get it because we were making so much money. We were making 10k a month. It, now, that would have been the time to participate, but I was so frustrated from fleet last time. That it was like, look at this, though. Research look concluded. at this. Hey, no mod empire. I like that. Like the way that looks. Oh my gosh. Oh hey. What do we do? You guys surveyed this. Nobody came down here and got this handled? Oh come on. Construction ship. Build Starbase? Lacking. Oh. <laughs> well move there. I don't know if we'll actually get to pull it off, but we try. Funny. Okay, well. Research concluded. Enigmatic encoder, decoder, energy weapon, attack, speed, and damage. Yes, please. Keep doing that. So up here, we can see this guy says, yep, I'm just 
I'm going straight down there. It's exactly where it should go. So it's gathering that up. Now what we have to check here is he had yeah, he's upgrading. But he's gathering all that trade now, so that's going down. That's why we're making ten K a month. Um and what we need to do Research here concluded. is build one right about one, two, one, two, probably right about there. So there's this guy, these guys, this guy. Let's see, build a trade, upgrade. We're going to take this trade and shoot it. Um, on up probably this is doing what that trades going that way and this is saying go that way yeah that'll work so it's gathering on that trade all this trade is being gathered here and shot straight to the home world all the trade here is being gathered and shot straight to the home world and this is done genius Kelly the chthonic siren our study suggests that facilities like this were once treated as focal points for cosmic energy, affecting a general sense of place for the ancient civilization which built them. Etched records speak of councils who would channel these energies in order to guide their empire's fortunes. Such observances did not halt their society's eventual decline, but in the millennia which followed, there also came an inheritor who would translate and revive the practice. They too have since left these sites for parts unknown. The vast timepiece has slowly ticked on through the periods of at least two civilizations. Its automated siren has now called on us to observe this ritual at sites across our region of space. Whether or not anything tangible results from it, the United Information Alliance is now poised to observe. Change the ley lines clues variable to 14. Changes the ley lines progress variable to the event hidden event happens. <laughs> I wonder if their code is not quite right their paradox in terms of victory conditions we're, we're crushing it the Lorango shipping lines has been on our heels the whole time though dang well pretty happy about how this whole game has turned out though really we're just waiting for the end game crisis and then things are going to shift so feel pretty good about where we're at and we just need to roll through some of this. See what we're doing. What do you got? He's got leader and a specialist. We got leaders that need jobs. This guy right here says, hey, uh, if you want to build something, I can provide some more jobs. I think the thing to do is provide you with some commercial zones. Another day, another scientific breakthrough. Another scientific breakthrough. Kinetic weapon damage, explosive weapon damage, because we're not going to be using much in the way of kinetics. So, Zimpak, it's a research planet. So let's do all the research, shall we? How are we looking over here? 26 volt amounts. We're a little low on gases, a little low on crystals. Our research is 26k. Which is pretty fair. So if we do one more of these and one more of these and a civilian industries. It's a nice looking plan. The little habitat here says, hey, I need some more jobs. What kind of jobs would you like to give me? Well, if I give you plants and upgraded that and put another one on there. We have some jobs. This one, same kind of situation. Upgrades. Lots of upgrades. Ring A says, I have specialists that don't have jobs. Can you provide specialists? Well, I can on some other planets, like right here. Let's look at this one. Galactic Stock Exchange, that will provide you two specialist jobs. Some more administrative office, that will provide you some more specialist jobs. Okay, on the this world, I want to save the last three slots for gases, crystals, moats, and we'll have one more slot left after that. Yes, we'll do your deal. 
first of the month. It's the first of a big month. It's 2464. That you get this late in the game with this many pops, and on the first of the month, the game can lag depending on which month it is. In this case, the game is lagging very hard. Research concluded. And, and one of the things that you'll see as a new player to Stellaris is you'll get on forums and things like that and you'll see people complaining about uh, the lag on the end game. And you can see it's not very bad for me. Uh, what you're going to find is that there are a couple of contributing factors to that lag and one is people playing on not very good machines but the more likely candidate is they're trying to play on the biggest map in the game. They're playing on 800 or 1,000 stars. This is a 600 star Research system, which is the default that the game provides. And I don't begrudge anybody for wanting to play on the biggest map, but I think you need to understand that <laughs> when you do that, you are setting yourself up for some hard times. Because, you know, the game is, the game has some difficulty with that. But uh, if you have a decent system like I do, I have a, and here's the thing, I have an i7 and a TI-1080 graphics card. Um, it's no great shakes, but it plays pretty much everything buttery smooth. And the only thing that even remotely lags here is Stellaris on the bigger maps or at the end of a game like this. I mean, I play Skyrim with the ENB and all kinds of graphics mods and it's 60 frames a second or better, you know. It's it's a good system. But there's only so much... Stellaris is doing so many calculations per population and doing things like changing people's jobs and moving them around and doing all kinds of stuff. And it, it saves the bulk of that for the first of the month. And... It's a lot to go through. It's a lot to iterate through. And there's no amount of parallelism that can get around the, some of the logic because certain things have to be done in sequence. <laughs> so people who are like, use more cores, use more parallel programming, they're, they're, these people are not software developers and they don't understand how things actually work. <laughs> you can't just throw more cores at it and you can't throw more threads at it and solve the problem. There are certain things in the calculations that are linear and when one calculation is waiting on the result from another calculation no amount of parallelism is going to speed that up so uh, take it from a guy who's actually done <laughs> some really nasty multi-threaded programming for business applications and a little bit of parallelism it's not it's not a panacea it's not a magic bullet it's not the thing that gamers gamers hear these terms and they think they think they are magic bullets. They think, oh, parallel programming, more threads, more cores. <laughs> it's magic, and it's just not. It's like once you get in and start digging in and start actually dealing with the logic of uh, some of these problems, and start seeing and start programming it yourself, and start seeing, oh, yeah all these different calculations need the same data and they have to <laughs> they end up blocking they end up waiting for each other so yeah you can <laughs> you can send them all out there to work by themselves on their own threads you can do parallel processing but in a game like this where a lot of the data and a lot of calculations are waiting for each other and are important um, there's no way to, to parallel your way out of that so Research concluded. there are certain things you can do a lot of stuff you can't that's that's the issue a lot of stuff that you can't so um, you see me here I have a this is a pretty nice pace for the game on normal speed on my computer and I've only had the one really blocky month there that was kind of glitched at the start that kind of really hung up even the integrations didn't go bad and that's my recommendation to new players this is a plenty big map play on 600 stars unless you really have just a hog beast of a system to play on 800 or a thousand stars there's no reason 
to go any bigger. It's just it's more of this. It's more of this. The only thing that playing on a on a bigger map kind of presents to you, I think, is the opportunity for more fallen empires and more fallen empire wars. You can it's easier to get a war in heaven on an 800 star or a 1000 star map and it's easier to get maybe even multiples of them. You put a thousand stars out there and, and have five fallen empires seated for the start of the game. Uh, things are going to happen and they can get pretty dicey and it can get kind of, kind of crazy and kind of fun. So, Construction project complete. but you got to have a, you either have to have a system that can handle it or you have to understand going in that you have to have the patience. You have to know this is what the game's going to do when it gets there. Uh, I think that's, I think, video game players often uh, don't have the patience to understand what the heck's going on. To say, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm also going to know at the same time that that this is the outcome. These, these are the possibilities. That there's going to be lag and I'm just going to have to deal with it. That's the number one thing. Just understand there's going to be lag and you're going to have to deal with it. Our, our naval capacity is really high. We can actually build another fleet. And that is something that we might want to do. An edict complete. came off. One of the edicts uh, up here. There's a... Uh, Master's teachings, philosophical states, we weren't using that one. Research Desperate complete. measures, we weren't using. Fortress proclamation. Monthly minerals, plus 33%. You can see we just started to take a hit on that. I'm going to turn that back on because I really like having that. We're going to use Ambition Grand Fleet when the crisis hits. All right, ancient battle site. Scans of Balduric have revealed an area with packed with refined material and scattered radiologicals. Although little is visible for more. To find out more, we will need to investigate this. So that's it. Balderic. And uh, we're going to go down there real quick. So here these guys are. We can say Balderic. We can say excavate site. Why can't he excavate site? Oh, because we don't own this. So we can sit this guy here. We can, we can grab one of these guys and we can say Starbase. It's going to cost us 600 because it's so far away from our home. <laughs> But we can do it. Yeah, so so my advice to all of you is if you want to play on a large map, do it. Just understand what's going to happen and don't be upset about it and don't go to the forums and bitch about it because your bitching isn't going to change anything. You can't change physics and you can't change the logic of of how this, this code functions. You just can't. And, and no matter how smart you think you are, you're not a software developer. So... Maybe don't whine and shut up. <laughs> Play the damn game. Enjoy it and, and stop your bitching because I'm frankly getting tired of it. Um, I see it all the time on the Steam forums. People complaining about the end game lag and, and so many times they're their own worst enemies. Well, what size map are you playing on? A thousand stars with a hundred mods. Okay. Okay, Sparky. Research maybe, maybe we should just take your license for this game away. And I know this is a, a tutorial. This is the twenty seventh episode of this tutorial, and I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little uh, salty. But I feel like that needs to be addressed because um, I don't want new players to come into this game and make the environment worse. I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy the game. I want you to be successful at it. That's why I build these tutorials. That's why I play the game and try to explain everything as I go. But more importantly, I want you to enjoy the game, and I want you to be a a a good positive participant in the community and if you get to the end game here and you're playing on too big of a map for your system for your rig to handle and you're complaining about it um, you're no don't <laughs> don't do that and that's the thing this 600 star map this is fun this is still a fun game a lot happened in this series look we're 27 episodes into this and a lot happened uh, I think I think this is a this is one of my favorite series I've done on this channel because so much happened, and really all we're doing now is hanging out waiting for the end game crisis to happen. But I'm beyond excited about how this happened. We had the great cons, we had the en enigmatic fortress, even um, we had plenty of robot uprisings, we had two wars, 
uh, that that resulted in vassalization. We got to see two complete integrations. So we got to see this happening. There we got to see the L gate, uh, and we were prepared for all of it, and we never once really got in a whole lot of trouble. We got in we got in some trouble with our resources right after this integration, even though we spent a lot of time preparing for it. But in one episode, we got out of that trouble, and now look, we're in the black on everything, and in fact, uh, we're in a really close position to be able to to wean ourselves completely off everything the only thing we're buying now is moats and we don't even have to buy those anymore so we can hit cancel remove on that and we're done and now the only thing we're buying is consumer goods and we don't have to buy those anymore look it's 27 episodes in and we're we're weaned off of needing to buy anything from automated trades wow and i don't even need to sell these cancel that all i'm doing is selling food I couldn't be more happier. This is awesome. This is exactly what I like to see by the end of the game. Exactly that. And we're, we're one over on starbase capacity, which we'll fix when we can. So, wow. I am, I'm kind of stunned, actually. I'm kind of stunned. This is, wow. It went really well. So 27. So we're just waiting for the end game crisis. I really want you guys to see the Prithoran Scourge. We're going to go down here next episode and... We're going to build another uh, fleet. In fact, I'm going to go in here and get them started. I'm going to start 10 of those, and then we'll use the fleet manager to build the rest of them out. Uh, we probably have room. We have room for at least one more fleet, I think. Maybe not two. We have room for two more, for five more titans, so... We're in good shape, and when the Prithoran Scourge comes, we should be able to curb stomp them pretty well. Especially because if you take a look at our fleets, here at the end, we got a bunch of extra ships over here that need, that are scattered around. Oh, this is, these are all the fleets over here. So this is something else we need to do. Let's get real quickly. We're going to put all of these guys over here. They had fleets all over the place. Uh, this is the hive-minded folks. Research concluded. So we'll get all their fleets squished together and get them fixed as well. Um, oh, uh, uplift we can unlock. That's one of the only things we didn't get around to doing on this playthrough. But when you take a look at our fleets, look where we're at uh, power-wise. And it's a little hard to tell from there, but if we click on the fleet, 205... K, 185, 192. We're in fairly good shape for the end game. I've been in better shape, but I like this. We're, we're going to be in a good way. So, My thanks to all the newbies who have watched all the way to this point, and my thanks also to all my Patreon supporters and my regular fans who watch the Stellaris content and have watched all the way to this point, episode 27. There's probably only two or three more episodes left to go. Uh, we have to get to the year 2500 for the, the actual victory screen to pop. And I'm one of the very, very, very few Stellaris players who plays every game to the victory screen. Uh, you will day, see in a lot of free. forums and Facebook posts and things like that, people, Reddit and all that kind of stuff, where people don't play to the end game screen. Uh, in fact, they'll play until they quote-unquote get bored or have dominated the game or whatever and then they'll start a new one um, certainly that's valid but I'm I'm a play to the end guy so we're gonna go until we see the screen and if we get the crisis here in the next few years and we manage to curb stomp them then what we might do is just take our federation go to war with somebody else and claim some more <laughs> more land <laughs> some more space but I appreciate everybody so much for for participating in this long series and I hope that this tutorial serves people really well for a long time my other tutorial series the 2.2 one that I did so long ago has now well over 200 240,000 views something like that um, and the strange thing is I get emails and comments on that particular video series every week from new Stellaris players showing up saying oh my gosh I can't believe this exists thank you so much I get comments on my other tutorial videos from new players Research to the game concluded. every single week and 
it blows my mind this game is still attracting hordes of new players to it so if you think it's a dead game or anything like that um, nope people are are buying this game and every time that um, every time paradox releases a DLC the game gets a little bit more uh, amplification and new players pick it up and I think because it can seem like a really daunting game I think uh, my videos and other Research people concludes. like aspect have helped Stellaris uh, continue to have the traction it has and continue to grow its player base because they get in here and they watch these videos and they're like oh no I got it I can do this so those of you who are new to this and want to be a part of the Stellaris community we welcome you I think Paradox welcomes you. I certainly welcome you. I welcome you on my channel. I hope you hang out for a long time. And I hope that you get interested in some of the other games I play here. I'm real big on role-playing games and strategy. So, folks, thanks for watching. It's been a long, rambly episode, but thanks for sticking with me. As always, thumbs up the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a question or comment down below if you want to. And if you'd like to support my channel, Xenomorph for me. I've been talking about Alien. Um, then my Patreon's listed in the description below. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.